Well, good afternoon. Uh, this is going to be interesting. This is a first for me, and I guess John said it's a first for boot camp. So we're going to try this remote to see how it works. Um, how's the audio? Can you all hear me okay? Yep. 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 Okay. I really want this to be interactive, so uh, right now I can hear you pretty well, and uh, so hopefully we'll be able to do group interaction here, uh, QA and I. All right. So, um, the topic that I've selected for this session is not reporting. Uh, John and I had a little bit of a miscommunication. But FileMaker and the Enterprise, um, and I'll explain more what that is in a minute, but that's something that I've really had a lot of experience with over the last couple of years, and it's really the topic that I'm really passionate about. Uh, a little bit about me, just so kind of get that out of the way. Um, My Data is a, a custom software development company. We're in Texas, Dallas, Austin, Houston, as well as Denver. Uh, we're a platinum partner. Personally, I'm a 5 acre 10 authorized trainer and a 10 certified developer. Uh, been a speaker at several developer conferences as well as pause on error. Uh, I love doing enterprise and integration projects with FileMaker. Um, in other words, I enjoy doing projects where there's more than FileMaker going on. And I've been doing this stuff for at least 15 years, so hopefully I've either got some experience to share or I'm just really crazy, one of the two. I'd like to get some feedback on, on who's there. And so I just want to ask these questions, maybe if somebody can get a hand count. Uh, how many people in the room are in-house developers? You, you're an internal developer for an organization. That's about uh, seven. Okay. And then how many independent consultants? You actually do software development for a living. About eight or nine. Okay. So it sounds like almost half and half, maybe 45, 55, or something like that. Um, before I define what I think enterprise is, I'm just real curious. What what types of enterprise projects have has he has you worked on people in, in the group in the audience there? What if I said tell me about you know an enterprise project you've worked on? What what would you describe? Did uh, Genentech's contract management system? All right, all right. So I immediately think of enterprise because of the name there. And you said it was a contract management system? Exactly. Okay, all right. What else? Other ideas of enterprise projects? And then the brand consolidation for singular wireless. Okay. Others? I did a production management uh, thing for Amgen. What else? A virtual world integration project for Coca-Cola. Okay. So far, one thing that's common amongst all these is, is the names of, of recognizable companies, large companies. Well, you, Larry, you've been working on the uh, part, parts of the marketing request system for Amgen, right? Yeah, but it's just a... Um, I guess <clears throat> it's, it all seems to me that it's all, I mean, your computer just went to the chat. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, that it's, I mean, I would say that I've done a project for an, an enterprise, you know, but it's a it small project, and I wouldn't necessarily call it an enterprise project. Okay, all right. So you, you kind of brought up kind of the real question is, what is enterprise? What, uh, what does that mean, right? So let me just fast forward to that for a second, and let's, let's talk about how we might define enterprise. I, I was thinking about this, and the one thing that comes to mind for me when I say let's define enterprise or let's talk about an enterprise project is typically they have a dedicated IT department. 
usually. Not always, but that's probably one of the biggest common denominators. Uh, for me, the type of business, I feel like I've done enterprise projects in small and medium-sized businesses. I know I've done them in corporate settings, which is a lot of the type of projects that were mentioned here. Um, I think of K through 12, most schools uh, as an enterprise, and definitely universities are an enterprise. Other ways that we can define it, uh, size of revenue of the organization, how many employees or how many locations, what size of the project. It just, just me, if you measure the project, the amount of work in hours is, you know, these are just some arbitrary brackets here, but 50 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 plus. Uh, the size of the database in records or gigabytes. Uh, typically, if records are getting up into the high six figures or millions, any time a database gets over a gig, in my mind, other factors, technical complexity, are you just using FileMaker? Or are you doing some type of systems integration? And if you are doing systems integration, is it with just one system or is it with multiple systems? So kind of with this in mind, let's go back to that question that I asked a minute ago, what types of projects? With some of those definitions out there, or some of those measurements, those scales, other types of projects you might now think, well, yeah, that probably is enterprise based on one of those factors. In fact, I'll pull that slide back up so you can kind of look at it while you're thinking. factors in mind as we go because these are all things that I've run into that not every enterprise project affects every one of these factors, but a lot of them touch multiple ones that I've defined here. So let's back up and let's talk about what our objectives are. What, what do I hope to help you understand or learn uh, through this session? Really three, three bullet points. Um, one, I want to help you understand the benefits of just broadening your programming skills beyond FileMaker. If we only focus on FileMaker, I don't think that fits the enterprise. How do you better communicate with corporate IT? I think there's a whole body of knowledge and a whole set of skills that go into working with corporate IT departments. And that's why I define enterprise as having a, a dedicated IT department. I also think it's important to think like a consultant, not a developer, and I'll define what I think that means. And then I'm also going to throw in some examples um, from the real world on this. All right, so this probably goes without saying, but as I'll say later, I don't like to make assumptions. So first of all, you have to know your FileMaker fundamentals, right? And obviously, John and the rest of the speakers this week have been talking about a lot of these things, relational design, interface design, calculations and scripting, reporting, security, FileMaker server. FileMaker server is a big one for me. Um, I don't think you can do enterprise projects without extremely strong skills with FileMaker server. How do you get these fundamentals? Well, one way is to do what you've done this week, go to boot camp. Another way would be to take the FileMaker training series, either through an authorized trainer or to buy it and do a self-study. One of the things that I'm sure John and the others have been driving home this week is knowing more than one approach to the same problem. John Mark Osborne kind of really is the one who I think first started vocalizing this point in our community through his training. 
saying, look, there may be five different ways to implement a certain 